Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so moving ahead with the next topic which is Ohm's law which states that current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. So in simple words, you can see that as voltage increase as potential difference increases current also increases so like both are proportional to each other so you can say that v is proportional to i or in order to change this proportionality into equality we introduce a constant which is r that is nothing but resistance so here v represents potential difference i represents current and r represents resistance so if you look at the uh, vi graph you see that as current is increasing voltage is also increasing and the slope of this line gives the value of resistance why right? because how do you calculate the slope of this line so let's say that this angle is theta so slope of this line is given by tan theta and what is the value of tan theta so tan theta would be equal to this divided by this so what is this value so this value basically corresponds to the value of voltage right so tan theta would be equal to v divided by i because for this particular triangle let's say that this is triangle a b c so tan theta would be equal to a c divided by b c so where a c represents the value of v and b c represents the value of i so and v by i is equal to r so slope of the graph gives us the value of resistance now it is also important to know that the vi curves for metals are different at different temperatures so when you vary the temperature the curve also changes or the graph also changes but uh, it always remains a straight line because ohm's law still holds true now when we talk about ohm's law we must also talk about the two categories of substances so one category of substances which follow ohm's law are called ohmic substances and the other category of substances which do not follow ohm's law are called non ohmic substances so some examples of ohmic substances would be metals for example the copper wires iron wires silver wires at their operating temperatures they follow ohm's law so mostly metals at their operating temperatures follow ohm's law so they are ohmic substances whereas there are a lot of substances which do not follow ohm's law for example leds diodes transistors so these do not follow ohm's law even the bulk filaments they do not follow ohm's law so they are all examples of non ohmic substances so now that we have introduced resistance let's talk about resistance and resistivity so let us first talk about resistance so resistance is the property that opposes the current flow so it, it's like resistance and current they are like opposite of each other whenever there is current if resistance is present it will try to stop it so it always opposes current anything that opposes current that's resistance not anything but resistance opposes current that's the very simple thing you need to remember okay so resistance is given by this expression v by i as we saw from ohm's law that v is equal to i r so from that we get r is equal to v by i now also there is another expression for resistance for a particular material for example resistance is equal to rho l by a so here rho is the resistivity of the material L is the length of the conductor and A is the cross sectional area of the conductor. So this is cross sectional area of the conductor. Now with from this expression we get to know that resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor whereas it is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area of the conductor because resistivity is again uh, a value which depends upon the nature of the material of the conductor so it has nothing to do with length or area of the conductor but resistivity totally depends on the nature of the material of the conductor so resistivity is also sometimes called as specific resistance right now how do we measure resistance 
So the unit to measure resistance is ohm, which is denoted by this Greek letter omega or ohm, whatever you call it. And how do we measure resistivity? Because now that we are talking about two things, one is resistance, one is resistivity. So resistance is the property that opposes current flow. So resistance depends upon the length and cross-sectional area of the conductor. So if you have a conductor which is longer than the other, so the resistance would differ. But when you talk about resistivity, it is a value attached to a particular material. For example, if you compare two uh, wires made up of different materials, so even if they are of same length and same area, but their val the value of their resistivities will be different because resistivity depends upon the nature of the material. So I hope you understand the difference between resistance and resistivity. Okay, so how do we measure resistivity? So for resistance, the unit is ohm. For resistivity, the unit is ohm per meter. That is ohm per meter per meter that is the unit for resistivity how because resistivity is equal to resistance into a by l now area is what length into length or length into breadth so basically area unit for area unit for resistance is ohm unit for area is meter square and unit for length is meter so from this you see that a unit for resistivity is ohm meter so this is the unit for resistivity. Now that we are talking about these two terms, resistance and resistivity, there are two corresponding terms for them. One is conductance. Now resistance is the property of uh, a material to oppose the current flow. What is conductance? Conductance is the property of a material that allows current flow. So basically resistance and conductance are the inverse of each other. So conductance which is normally denoted as C is equal to 1 by resistance. So just the inverse of resistance. So therefore the unit to measure conductance is ohm inverse. 1 by ohm which is ohm inverse. Similarly just the opposite of resistivity is conductivity. So as I said that resistivity is the property of a material which depends upon the nature of the material. Similarly, conductivity again is the property of a material and conductivity is denoted by sigma, which is equal to 1 upon resistivity. And the unit to measure conductivity would be what? Unit to measure conductivity is ohm inverse meter inverse. Ohm inverse is also written as mo, mo meter inverse. So this is the unit for conductivity. So these are some basic terms which you should know. Resistance, resistivity, conductance and conductivity. Okay, so now let's look at the change in resistivity with temperature. So it has been observed that resistivity increases with increase in temperature. And how? So if you look at the variation, you see that rho is equal to rho naught 1 plus alpha t minus t naught. So what does this mean? This means that if at, at a temperature t naught, if the resistivity was rho naught, at another temperature t, the resistivity will be rho, such that rho is equal to rho naught into 1 plus alpha t minus t naught. So if at some initial temperature t naught, the value of resistivity was rho naught, then at some other temperature t, the value of resistivity would be rho, which is given by this expression. Now, another question that you might ask is, okay, so I know rho, rho naught, t, t naught, but what is alpha? So alpha is called the temperature coefficient of resistivity. So on similar lines now as we saw that resistance and resistivity are closely related to each other. The moment resistivity changes resistance also changes because resistance depends on resistivity. You remember R is equal to rho L by A. So resistance is dependent on resistivity. So on those grounds, we can say that the variation of resistance with temperature can also be written as R is equal to R naught 1 plus alpha T minus T naught. Now since rho and R are directly proportional, so you can very easily replace rho with R in this 
equation. So this is how resistivity and resistance varies with temperature. So here you see some of the graphs like in metals this is how resistivity changes. So basically right now whatever we were talking about were was for metals. So for metals as temperature increases resistivity also increases. However, for semiconductors that doesn't happen. For semiconductors as temperature increases resistivity decreases and that too not in a linear manner. How and in case of alloys which are a mixture, so in case of alloys also the resistivity increases with increase in temperature but you see there is a slight difference like when temperature is zero the value of resistivity is not zero. It has some value when the temperature is zero. However, after that as temperature increases resistivity also increases. So it's good to remember these graphs because many a times in these kind of competitive examinations uh, you are asked questions related to graphs. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.